creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today I am bringing to you my version and putting my twist on those pizza pan DIYs that you see all over Pinterest. These are absolutely gorgeous and they are done using the pizza pans at the Dollar Tree. I think they are so fun. There are endless possibilities when making these. These are a very versatile piece and so I've seen them all over Pinterest now for a couple of months and thought, you know what? I think I can do this using Dollar Tree items. So I'm going to go ahead and do one and put my twist on it showing you how budget friendly these are and how amazing they turned out. I love the way this pizza pan DIY turned out and I can't wait to show you how easy it was to do. So I'm going to quit my Gavin. Let's jump into it and let's do a pizza pan DIY on a budget. This is a wall decor piece. Did I say that? It is if I didn't. Alrighty, so getting started, we're gonna take just a simple pizza tray. If you haven't seen these DIYs, you gotta look on Pinterest because you're gonna love them. Then using some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of, yep, white. Pretty simple, huh? We're gonna give this pizza tray a good coat of this chalk paint and I'm only gonna do one coat for now. I'm gonna let it dry because, wait for it. When I put the second coat on, I'm gonna put a nice thick coat of this paint on because, again, wait for it, we're gonna go in with some of Waverly's Antique Wax and we're gonna give this kind of that wood washed finished. And it's easy to do this when your paint is wet. You're gonna get a smoother, more blended look and it's gonna save you time because you're not gonna have to sand it to get that look. And so just by kind of using a dry brush stroke with the wax, you're going to get a real nice blended soft look on this pizza tray. Yep, that's what we're going for. Once everything's good and dry, I'm going to go in with just a regular ruler and a real thin paintbrush. And again, using the antique wax, I'm going to do a line right down the middle. I'm eyeballing this. I'm not measuring it. If you want to measure it, you can. I just feel like the more imperfect it is, the more perfect it's going to be. Now, again, you don't have to use the antique wax. If it's hard to get your hands on it, you can use just a regular brown acrylic paint for this. But because this is what I have on hand, because I'm not gonna lie to you, I bought a few bottles of this online because I'm not sure if Walmart is gonna carry it anymore and it really is one of my favorite things to craft with. And so once I've got my first line, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off my ruler before I place it down to place my second line because there is going to be some paint on your ruler and when you set it down on your pizza tray you don't want to add some lines that you don't need and so you want a clean slate I'm gonna go ahead and add more lines and they're gonna be about two inches apart going the whole width of the pizza tray and look at here this black and white check fabric is making an appearance again. I'm telling you, I have a never ending stash of this fabric because I bought five yards of it. Taking some of this glossy Mod Podge, have I told you all, I am not a gloss person. I'm a matte person, I don't know why I bought this, but this is the perfect DIY to get rid of this gloss Mod Podge. I'm gonna place a good healthy coat of this on the bottom third of this pizza tray because I'm going to place the fabric right on top. Once I got the fabric on top, I'm going to go in with a second coat of the Mod Podge to really adhere it on and stiffen up that fabric. Once the fabric and the Mod Podge are good and dry, not going to lie, it's going to take a couple of hours, so we're going to have to put our patient pants on and wait for it to dry. Then I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess fabric, but when I cut it off, I'm not going to go along the pizza pan itself. I'm going to leave about an inch of fabric because I want the edges of this to look nice. And so to do that, when you leave about an inch of fabric and you cut slits in it like I'm doing here, now this works for round objects. This is how you get a nice clean edge on round objects like this. Round objects? Is the pizza pan an object? 
I'm going to call it an object. This again is the Kelly Barlow vocabulary. Once we've cut those slits in there, we can then flip over the pizza pan, putting some hot glue on there. Look at that. When I fold over the little tabs that I cut, it's going to give us a nice clean edge. Isn't that a cool trick? This works with anything. It works with paper. It works with anything. That is an easy way to get a nice clean edge so you're not getting those ripples or those folds. You like that? Ha <laughs> ha. Kelly Barlow, tip of the day. I wasn't much liking the harsh line between the fabric and the pizza tray. I felt like it just looked sloppy and unfinished. And so using some of this, I want to say twine slash burlap ribbon. This is a set that I got at Michael's, but Dollar Tree has some that is very similar that you can use as well. I figured that this would be the perfect finishing touch to transition the fabric to the pizza tray and give it more of that rustic feel. And hey, it's another way for me to incorporate my favorite thing, twine, into this DIY. I feel like it's finishing touches like that that take a DIY from looking like just something handcrafted to something high-end and something that looks like you picked it up at, say, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, or Joann's. When doing DIYs like this, I don't typically do a trial run of it. I kind of create it with you as I'm doing it because I don't want to do two. So as I was doing this, again, I felt like I didn't like the edge of the pizza tray. I felt like it looked like a pizza tray. And so what better way to kind of fill in that gap right there than using some of Dollar Tree's decorative nautical rope. Perfect, look at how it just kind of finishes off that edge. And now it has taken it from looking like, again, a pizza tray to something else. Yeah, what else? A Dollar Tree wall decor piece, yeah. And to this tray, I will be adding, mm -hmm, these wood words that you can get at the Dollar Tree. They have several different ones, home, family, hello, smile. Pick one that you like. I liked hello because it's gonna go on my front door. I am taking again, yeah, look at that, some of the Waverly Antique Wax, and I'm going to paint it with this. Now, am I really painting it or am I staining it? You choose. I'm gonna say staining because that's what I like about the antique wax, is when you apply it to the wood, you still get that wood grain look that comes through it that I really love that you don't get when you use a solid acrylic paint. Now, if you can't get your hands on the Waverly Antique Wax, use a regular stain or just use an acrylic paint if you want to get that brown look. And so since I ordered, again, like I told you, several bottles of the Antique Wax, I'm going to use that because it matches everything in my house. So why not? So give it a good coat of that. You don't have to wipe off the wax. Some people tell me, Kelly, do you wipe off the wax? I don't. I just let it dry and it gives it more of that rustic look because I like rustic. Did you know that? Guess what? I'm bringing to you options. If your Dollar Tree doesn't carry these wood words, Linda and I have made these available in her Etsy store for digital download. You've got a couple of different options for words. And if you don't wanna do digital download and you want her to cut and send them to you with free shipping, they are also available. You can find the link to Linda's Etsy store in the description box below. Since my Dollar Tree had the wood words, that's what I used in using some hot glue. I'm just gonna put a ton of this on the back of this and it's gonna go right here mm -hmm, where the black and white gingham fabric is. I thought that that black and white gingham fabric would just add so much character, give it more of that farmhouse feel and really make the word pop just a bit more. The top of this tray is missing a little something, I think. And so I made a few of my twine flowers. I made them in three different sizes. You can see that I did three bunches of twine that I just wrapped around my finger and tied them off and just taking some hot glue and hot gluing them on top of each other, just offsetting them a bit. You will end up with some twine flowers that look just like these flowers here. They are so easy and you can make so many with one of Dollar Tree's twine spools, endless twine flowers, I say, and you're paying a dollar for them, so why not make your own flowers? You can color them with some ink, too, if you want. If you want different colors, blue, pink, yellow, get creative, make some twine flowers. Why not? And to give these flowers a more finished look, I'm gonna finish them off in the center with a wood button. These are buttons that you can find at Michael's. Now, at the top of this tray, 
this is where I wanted these flowers and I wanted to do a variation in sizes just to break it up a bit and so I did one larger flower and two smaller ones. Now because this is a wall decor DIY we need a hanger to hang it up and so to do that I'm going to use some of Dollar Tree's decorative nautical rope. Now for this piece I want the rope to show so I cut about a 12 inch piece and I want the hanger itself to show. If you don't want the hanger to show just cut a small piece and hot glue it to the back. I want it to show so I cut a nice size because I thought it would add to the piece itself and just using some hot glue I am going to just hit the back of this rope with a ton of hot glue to really adhere it on. Maybe a stick or two whatever it needs. If Kayla is doing a voiceover on this she's going to tell you you're going to need a whole pack of hot glue but I must say maybe a stick will do the trick. Now let's go take a look at this in my craft room hung up on that really cool wood wall. It looks amazing. This week Kayla's trying paint pouring for the first time using that fluid art ready to pour acrylic paint. This should be interesting because Kayla's doing it. Head on over to her channel. You can find the link to this video. Guess where? In the description box below. And that there is my version putting a rustic farmhouse twist on these pizza pan DIYs. They are so versatile. They are so budget friendly. And would you look at the outcome? I love it. I think that these are so budget friendly that they'd really make for a great housewarming gift to give, don't you think? I hope you all enjoyed today's pizza pan DIY. This was Pinterest inspired. I do want to put that in there again. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to, you guessed it, 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please, and bye for now.